Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to Wakaiva High School and the Culinary Arts Program. We are coming to you live from the kitchen. And mm. Chef Bates is here with me. We are here to answer all of your questions about the Wakaiva Magnet Culinary Arts Academy. And welcome, uh, Chef. We've got a lot of time tonight to, to demonstrate. We've got students all over the kitchen ready to demonstrate the skills that they're learning. We want our parents and our future and current Mustangs who might be interested in a culinary career or education to be able to ask those questions tonight. We're gonna be keeping an eye on the live chat. So if you have questions, let us know. We'll be able to respond to those in real time. And let me start by just setting the stage here. Of course, we know that this is the magnet program of the culinary arts. So tell me a little bit more about what is a magnet program and how did Wakaiva earn that distinction? Uh, well, before I get started with that question, and thanks so much, Mr. Barchi. Mr. Barchi is the voice of Wakaiva, and we are privileged that he's here in the kitchen with us today. So thank you so much, Mark. It is my uh, pleasure. Something, I have, something a little different to do besides I know, right? <laughs> Uh, I'm in the kitchen tonight with 17 of my very best students. They're all the way from our freshman, first year level, barely done anything in this room, to our uh, juniors and seniors who have run huge events, and catered weddings, uh, done events for the uh, Secretary of Education at the downtown OCPS office. We've done a lot of things. And today what we're doing is our kids are actually making their very own Krispy Kreme donuts because if you can't make a good Krispy Kreme donut, you haven't done well in culinary arts. That's just a fact. Uh, the difference between our program, a magnet program, and any other culinary arts program at the 11 different high schools throughout OCPS who have them, is our program is focused in on the business side of what it means to be a chef. So that our students, when they graduate, haven't just had an experience to learn a lot of new recipes and, and gain friends like you can at any of our OCPS locations. Here you come with actual work experience with professional certifications and the kind of background that will make people want to hire your kid or go on to culinary arts education if that's the next thing that you'd like to do. Yeah, and I saw that last year, of course, our, we did a virtual awards night because we weren't able to have the traditional awards night in person, mm -hmm. and I produced that, and I saw that you had some culinary accolades included in there. So this is not, as you mentioned, I mean, yes, it is fun and it is a great activity and, and a great bonding thing as an elective course, but you can come out with a legit credential yeah, yeah, that absolutely. you can then parlay into a career in the culinary arts at the collegiate level and professional level. Absolutely. I mean, all of our students, if they finish the entire program, can earn up to 13 college credit hours, which is wonderful. They, they get a jump start on college. If they decide they'd like to go into the hospitality uh, side of things, not the, the kitchen side of things, and they want to be like, say, a restaurant manager, and they're interested in going to the second best hospitality college in the world, which is our own Rosen College of Hospitality at UCF. Uh, they, we have a partnership with that school as well. So our kids get a head start. Professional certifications, quite a few of them, uh, and a professional certification is different than any other test you take while you're in high school because it's the same kind of a test that the pros are taking out in the field. Uh, if you are a working chef right now, you have gotten your Serve Safe, Safe Food Manager certification. You have that. You have to have it. Our kids are getting that one too. Our freshmen and our sophomores are getting the same certification that you would if you're a 50 year old chef. So they come out with a lot of good, good experience that um, I think they found really valuable. And if you pause just one second, sir, just yeah. one second, hold, hold that thought. Uh, yo class, yes, yes, sir. Uh, in just a couple seconds, we're going to need to check our donuts because they're going to need to go into the fryer if you want to eat them this evening. Okay. Yes, How's our oil doing? What temperature are we at? 150. 150. How are we doing on those toppings over there? Chef Matt? We're getting there. Thank you. There. All right, sorry about that. Absolutely. Sorry about that, guys. I'll tell you what, I, some of you may already know this, but if you don't, you know that I moonlight at Wakaiva as the public address announcer and, and sports information director, but my day job is at Disney. I didn't and, know, really? Yes, my day job is Disney. I work in HR, and I work with um, some recruiters. And I was actually on a project management organization last year that with the chefs at Disney and the culinary recruiting organization mm -hmm. and some of the very programs that you mentioned like Rosen are some of the programs that Disney sources from right, I mean, right. most of your uh, top names in culinary arts they don't just like put out a job posting on their website and see right. who walks through the door right. they have relationships with these culinary programs and they get referrals right and that's how you really get started in the industry particularly if you want to work for some of the the more acclaimed 
uh, restaurants. And, uh, in other words, you want to make a lot of money. Right. And, yeah, of course, yeah. you know, Disney <laughs> has, we have, you know, cook one, cook two, chef assistants. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sous chef, chef, uh, chef de cuisine, executive chef. We have all of those levels. Mm -hmm. And a lot of our cast members work their way up after being recruited through a program just like that. So yeah. this, is, this is really foundational for getting involved in a culinary career if that is your passion. Yeah, yeah. And uh, fun side note, I was an executive sous chef at Walt Disney World, the Osmond Steakhouse. Oh, wow. One of my very favorite places. Really? Yes, that is uh, Mrs. Barchi, the chorus director, and I. That is our anniversary spot. Really? Yes. How long have you been going there? I might have cooked for you. Um, How long have you been, been married? We have been married for 14 years. Okay, I didn't cook for you. Okay. <laughs> so, yes, but that is our anniversary spot. It's been working for us so far. Oh, so we'll it's a going. great place. Yes. It's a great place. I miss it sometimes. Yeah, well, I, and I know that, you know, the, the chef's life is not for everyone. It's, it's right. you know, stressful. It's very real-time, high energy. Mm -hmm. um, and, of course, you're always working during the time everyone else is eating. But, uh, but for those who are willing to take on the challenge of that lifestyle, it can be a very fulfilling career. Yeah, and, and even if your eventual goal is not to be in the culinary arts, you're saying to yourself, I, I like cooking a whole lot. I'm interested but I don't know that I want to be a chef. Is this right for me? The cool thing about our program is that our students come out of it with lots and lots of experience that they can apply to, regardless of where they're working. It doesn't really matter. Uh, human resources experience, intercommunication, all those soft skills that people need so bad, the ability to work in a team, to communicate that uh, honor, is because the kids that I have the privilege of working with have enabled me to really chase down a lot of dreams and when you can chase down dreams, people notice. But the only reason I've been able to chase all the things that I love and that I wanted to bring here is because I've got such good students at my back. I mean, we are the only culinary arts program in all of Central Florida, uh, not beyond Orange County, all of Central Florida, that has a working bakery where students can actually learn how to be professional pastry chefs. Uh, we're the only restaurant, right, uh, only restaurant. <laughs> It's got, it slides down sometimes. Uh, we're the only culinary arts uh, magnet in all of Florida that has a um, charcuterie station where our kids learn how to age cheese and meat. Um, we make our own bacon. We make our own beef jerky. We make our own hot sauce. And we got to remember to do that. Let's uh, pull out some of the hot sauce. I, I think you guys would get a kick out of seeing 10 gallons of raw hot sauce. That'd be pretty cool. Um, we're the only culinary arts program in the entire country that has its own coffee roaster. So our kids learn how to roast and make coffee from scratch, from raw beans. We are able to do a lot of firsts because our students are willing and passionate enough to take us there. So if you're the kind of kid who would love to pursue everything that food has to offer, from this food science to up to the highest level of gastro, um, I don't know what the word is I'm looking for. Remarkable eating. You want to go all the way up to <laughs> remarkable eating? We can help you to get there. And if all you want to do is to see if it's right for you, we might be the perfect place for you to make that exploration. Hi, my name is Chris Bates. I'm the program director and lead instructor at the Magnet Academy of Culinary Arts here at Wakaiba High School under the direction of our principal, Dr. Tamara Baker Drayton. It is a privilege to have you visiting our facility and so you'll have a chance to hear from some of our students. I just wanna take a moment and talk about some of the things that makes our magnet program unique here, both at Orange County Public Schools, but in Central Florida and in most of the state as well. We are fortunate in that we have a huge number of dedicated students who have allowed us to make some remarkable strides and we are looking forward to finding and meeting our new freshmen who are gonna come and join us and take us even further. For example, right now, right at this very minute, as I'm speaking, our senior culinary students, our advanced class, is working on the NASA Hunch Culinary Challenge where they are putting together recipes where if they are successful, they are gonna be literally feeding the astronauts that are revolving around the Earth on the International Space Station. Those are the kind of unique opportunities that if we are successful, if we take first place, all of those students will have full ride scholarships. Now, I know that people don't join a culinary arts program for the chance to get a full ride scholarship. They want the entire education experience for their children. And we're very happy that we get to do that. I'm sitting right now in our professional bakery. We are the only high school right now in all of Central Florida and one of three in all of Florida that has a commercial bakery dedicated for our students to learn in. 
In addition to this room, we also have our commercial kitchen where students study gastronomy and volume cooking, cooking huge meals. Last year in our commercial kitchen next door, 20 students made 450 meals for the entire city of Apopka when we catered their Christmas holiday dinner. Those are the kind of experiences along with learning all different styles of cooking from regional cuisine to international cuisine, from basic knife skills all the way up to the most advanced charcuterie techniques that our kids work on. They do all of that here, right on campus. Uh, two doors down on the culinary wing, we have our fully functional dining room. Beyond that is our classroom and our demonstration kitchen. With so much space, our students really get an opportunity to focus in on what's going to help them to be successful after graduation. Along the way, they earn a number of professional certifications and one college credit certification, which entitles them to earn up to 15 college credit hours after graduation. So if you have any more questions, and I know you will because you are the kind of people who do, go to wakivaculinary.org. There you'll see pictures and videos of all of our events as well as a full rundown of everything that we offer. You know, I was recently honored to become the uh, Teacher of the Year, and someone asked me, you know, isn't that a great honor? And it does, and it's neat. But I would never have been able to shine at my school if I didn't have the privilege of having so many students who shine so brightly around me. So for those of you who are current parents and your kids are with me now, thank you for entrusting them. And for those of you who are sending your kids to me next year, I cannot wait to meet you. Uh, my name is Ricardo Rodriguez. I'm a senior. This is my fourth year in Wakaiva Culinary. Uh, and honestly, Wakaiva Culinary, it's not just a program. It's like a family, and I really enjoy it. It also gives you like a feel of the food industry. It builds you up and shows you steps of how reality it actually is, and I act. I like it because when I grow up, I also want to be a chef and I also want to own my restaurant. And I couldn't ask for a better teacher. Chef Bates has uh, guided me through all four years and he's been there. It's like a father to me. Hi, I'm Josiah Woodson. I am a junior and I've been in culinary for three years. So I know for a fact that if I didn't join this program, I would have given up on the idea of being a chef in general because I wouldn't just, I wouldn't have had the drive for it, but chef has managed to keep me motivated throughout my three years so far and kept me on these, the idea of what I wanted to do after I graduate. And after I graduate, I want to go to Johnson Wales University. Yeah. Chef is probably the best type of teacher you could have asked for. He's hard on you when you need him to be hard on you, and, um, but he's also very encouraging and he will always pick you up when you're down, basically. So I'm Brian Baca and I'm a junior at Wakaiva High School. And I've been in this program since my freshman year, so I've been here for like three years now. It's like super fun, you get to like cook, you know, meet new people and all that. You know, Chef Bates, he's an amazing teacher. It's just, it's just a fun experience to be here. So I was in uh, Garmate, the Gourmet team last year with uh, two other people, Natasha and Kelly. And we got second place, like against like all the other schools, we got second place. We made uh, salmon, asparagus, and sweet mashed potatoes. That was our main dish and our side dish was a salad with shrimp on top. We got to practice, make our dish, taste it, see like what we needed to change. But before that, we had to do research on like the requirements on like what was needed. And then Chef was there to help us along the way. Being in the program, um, I thought about like um, working into the culinary industry, like owning a restaurant and stuff like that, or like working like as a, as a chef instead of just a cook, like working as a chef, you know, having a business and stuff like that. And like, at first I didn't think about that, but now that I'm here, I'm like learning, knowing more like about like business and stuff like that. So it's just like really interesting for me to know. Good, good, good. Yeah, right there. Yeah. All right, welcome back to our kitchen where donuts are well underway here with Chef Bates. And um, 
I did have one question come in during the break. It comes from Gail, who wants to know, do you need to have any existing cooking experience to come into the Wakaiva Culinary Arts Man? Uh, okay, so there's two answers to this. Uh, do you need it? Absolutely not. Absolutely not. We're going to teach you everything you need. In fact, we're probably going to have to unteach you some of the things that you think you know. That's okay. That's okay. Everybody comes with an idea of how to cook, and some of those ideas are great, and we hold on to them, and some of those ideas are... They need work. They just need a little work. <laughs> we have to start and kind of uh, bring some of those ideas and refine them, make them professional. No one needs experience. However, um, one of the cool things that we're going to be doing as soon as uh, all of our schools are uh, back completely open is we hold something called the Mustang Chef Summer Camp every summer where our incoming uh, freshmen have an opportunity to work with me, Chef Matt, and two other chefs for 21 days. They'll get half a credit, and in that course of that time, they get a jump start on everything that we do here. So the very best student chefs that we have coming in have an opportunity to cook for nonstop. They just cook nonstop. And at the end of that, whoever, uh, the, the student team that does the best gets a trophy. It's so much fun. We have, uh, a, we have it, a great it, That almost seems like an extension of like what you typically think of as band camp. Or it is. Other it kind is. Of boot camp kind of experience that allow you to hook the ground right. Absolutely. Boot camp is a great way to describe it. We thought about calling it that, but evidently there's a... Uh, Master Chef Boot Camp that already exists. Ah. And so I, they, they didn't like me using their name. So we call it something different. But we have a, it's, it's so much fun. Uh, if you've never spent eight hours cooking with a 13 year old, you just don't know what you're missing. <laughs> I can imagine. Well, I know, I, I, for, for my part, I'm a lot better and have a lot more experience eating food than I do cooking food. I generally consider it to be a great achievement if I can successfully boil pasta or steam an egg. <laughs> But I, I've actually seen firsthand and tasted first tongued <laughs> some of the output of your kitchen here um, as a chaperone for many homecomings and prom. Oh, dances, that's which, right. That's of course, right. we haven't had the opportunity to have those this year because of the pandemic. But um, I know that you have catered some events here on campus. And we, so I've, I've gotten those first hands. And I'll tell you what, if you, if you didn't tell me that this was student prepared on campus, I would have believed you if you told me it came out of a professional kitchen. I, well, the thing is, is that I have never failed, I never fail to be amazed by what my students can do. I have never given them a challenge that they didn't rise to. It's never happened. Uh, we did a meal for 550 uh, for the city of Apopka, their Christmas party. That was the biggest single event we've ever done. But it wasn't the most challenging. The most challenging was when we did the policeman's ball, because that was a 10 course meal. And sophomores and juniors did it. I didn't have any seniors at that event. And they did it completely. They did it even without me, because my knee, I just had knee surgery, so I couldn't even be there to help. I had to send a chaperone, and my students did everything while I was in the hospital, getting surgery. Wow, yeah, well, and I mean, I know that's, that's always a testament to leadership and to the Student Zone Initiative when you, you take away the, the, the leadership that they're used to having and they're able to self-start. Right. And that's, I mean, we talk about this with a lot of the extracurriculars here at Wakaiba, whether it's the fine arts or whether it's athletics or in this case, in culinary arts, that you learn so much more than the tactical skill that you're learning. Right. You learn discipline, you learn teamwork, you learn self-started motivation, you learn these skills that regardless of what career path you ultimately end up in are gonna be really useful uh, in the adult world. Right, and, and also uh, a lot of science. Our, we, our NASA's uh, culinary team is actually working right now. We're one of 27 schools that are left in after a couple of cuts, so we're well, they started off with 164, so now we're in the top 27 schools in the country competing for the right to feed all the astronauts on the space shuttle. Oh, wow. Um, or, no, I'm sorry, the International Space Station. <laughs> we don't do the space shuttle. No, no, no. I don't think we have a space shuttle. No, no. But, I mean, our, my kids are doing that, and they, there was an enormous amount of science that's involved in creating a meal for an astronaut. Enormous, because it's food that has to be packaged in such a way that it will be uh, okay to eat in a microgravity environment where the nutrition needs of an astronaut are so remarkably specific. So the kids had to research sodium intake levels uh, that change as food is cooked. Well, you know, it's remarkable. It's remarkable what they do. Um, so there's a lot more than just food. There's a lot of science, there's a lot of research, and there's a whole lot of math. You can ask, hey, Desire, hey, what are you studying right now in my class? 
What are you doing right now in my class? What's your homework assignment right now in my class? What is my homework assignment? In my class. Like what are we learning? Yeah. We're doing like baker's percentages. Math. 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 How much do you love math? This much. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, see now, my my wife and I were lab partners in college, oh, really? which was a horrible, horrible mistake. <laughs> Uh, we, we rigged the random drawing system okay. that we were dating at the time. We rigged the random drawing system like you. so that we would be paired up as lab partners. And it was the stupidest thing we ever did. Because the problem is that Mrs. Barchi does science the way that she cooks. Okay. And I cook the way that I do science experiments. Uh -oh. And so we frustrate each other quite severely. So, so she's the type of person who will calculate a negative mass. Okay. Because she'll just like, yeah, that's... That's close enough. Yeah, right. When she's doing science. And on the other hand, when I'm cooking, um, I'm one of those people who's looking for the meniscus <laughs> on the measuring cup. It's like, is that precisely eight ounces? Which, of course, if you're baking, that can really matter. Right. Um, cooking, that can just be tedious. But in any case, you know, the, I, there is a lot of that, that math and mm -hmm. chemistry. And mm -hmm. I think you were talking about molecular gastronomy earlier. Yeah, yeah. Um, that, that goes into all of this. And it, it's such a such a nexus of so many different disciplines Absolutely. that go in, and there's a reason it's called culinary arts, um, that there is art and science to it, that, that there's creativity and innovation in addition to the more engineering and tactical aspects of it. Right, and, it's, and the thing is, is that um, if you, thank you, um, can you set the heat on uh, 13 on all of them, please? Thank you. All right, no, no, you go ahead and change it now, please. I need it. I need that a little higher. Um, one of the things that our kids struggle with, and that we, I, I take a great amount of pride in the fact that they're learning, is how to actually do more than one thing at a time. Because a lot of my students sit here, and they're, they, they just never develop that ability. They think they have because they can see on the phone all the time. And they think that's multitasking. <laughs> but to actually understand that there's two valuable things going on at the same time, um, and you have to be able to keep the function of your mind focused on the other thing, that's a very, very valuable lesson. And I know, particularly in professional brigade kitchens. Oh, I yeah. Mean, when you, you, you get a chance to hear it once. Yes. And you get. And if I have to repeat myself, <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm gonna get upset. Right, and you, and and then you've got to keep all of that in your head. And so I, I've always wondered, of course, because I know I, I'm sure that many of the people watching, most of their exposure to professional kitchens is from watching reality television. Yes. So terrible. So, so yeah. So, so tell me. I know that just like you know, doctors get frustrated by watching medical dramas, and yes. lawyers get frustrated by watching legal dramas. Yes. How much do you get frustrated watching? I throw Gordon things. Ramsey? I throw things. Uh, my students ask me almost regularly. They're almost always. Somebody will. Uh, a student will say. I need for you to yell at me like Gordon Ramsay does. And I, I get you fired. Right. <laughs> well, probably not. But not right. I'm never going to do that. But the reality is, is that in the real world, chefs don't yell. We don't yell. In fact, if I need to yell, then I'm in mad. If I need to raise my voice in my kitchen, then I get upset. Um, the, the, world, the real world is so remarkably different than what you see on TV. Don't trust it for a second. However, uh, the idea that it's extraordinarily high pressure and you have to grow a fairly thick skin and be able to deal with uh, a good deal of stress, that is part of the world we live in. And yeah, certainly uh, if there is one realistic component to those shows, I think... The ability to take, yeah, the stress and the ability to take criticism, right, and to learn from it. And well, I mean, I think about the same things when I hear the coaches yelling at the players on the basketball right. court, and they're like, "Yes, coach," and they shake it off, and right. then they go back and they play it better the next time. You can't let it get to you. Can't you can't wallow in your own time, right. right? And that same level of professionalism, and I would say I don't know what the uh, appropriate word is in, in sports. It's considered uh, to be just what, good teamwork. Well, yeah, we, and we call it coachability. Coachability. Um, in here, it's called you're just a decent cook. <laughs> you know? Yeah. We, and that's one of the things that a lot of our students struggle with. But over the years, after I have them for a year or two, uh, we see this remarkable change where they stop expecting a pat on the shoulder for doing a decent job. And they start striving after excellence. I can't, that gets me so excited. I just can't wait for that. Hi everybody, my name is 
is Chef Bates. I'm the program director and lead instructor here at the Magnet Academy of Culinary Arts at Wakaiva High School. And we made this little video just to explain kind of what you can expect if you choose to join us. Now, right now, students from throughout Orange County Public Schools are lining up for an opportunity to take courses here. And there's a good reason why they are. You get to do so much. You start off knowing, well, nothing. Let's be honest, you've watched some cooking shows and you've enjoyed them. You don't know much about professional cooking because you've never been in a restaurant. And my job is to take you from point A, knowing nothing, to the opportunity to cook huge events and make a leapfrog jump into the industry. If you want to be a professional chef, this is the only place in Orange County that you want to be because there's nothing like what we do. Our students start off in Culinary One just learning the basics. We put a big old chef knife in their hand for the first time and we teach them how to use it. We teach them some of the standard recipes in Culinary One that you have to master to be successful. And then it gets challenging. Because from Culinary One to Culinary Two, we go from having 300 students down to having 100. And then you get the place to shine. Competitions start in Culinary Two. Culinary Two is when you start to cook stuff that's really challenging, interesting, exciting. If you're lucky enough and you make it all the way to Culinary 3, then you start doing stuff like catering wedding receptions, making huge meals for the city of Apopka and for our own staff, for the students here on campus and all across town. We've even taken our talents to the Orange County School Board, made meals for them. For the chairman of our school board, we've made meals for them. We've made meals for the governor and we've made meals for our Secretary of Education. If you are the kind of person that's been watching cooking shows for a long time and you love to watch Gordon Ramsay and you love to watch him yell at people, come here. I'll yell at you. It'll be great. While I'm yelling at you, you're going to get better and you're going to be able to take those skills and hopefully launch a great career in the rapidly expanding restaurant business. Now, if you're interested in coming and you want to get some more information, I need you to go to wakaivaculinary.org. I need you to do that today because spots are filling up very quickly. We expect to be completely full. So first come, first serve, right? Get in there and do it because once we're full, it goes to a lottery system. And you don't want to just maybe get in. You want to definitely be here. So if you like cooking, you love food, and you want an opportunity to do something that nobody else in Central Florida can do at your age, I'll see you in the kitchen. It's not just a program, it's like a family and I really enjoy it. It also gives you like a feel of the food industry. It builds you up and shows you steps of how reality it actually is and I, I like it because when I grow up I also want to be a chef and I also want to own my restaurant. I know for a fact that if I didn't join this program I would have given up on the idea of being a chef in general because I wouldn't just I wouldn't have had the drive for it but chef has managed to keep me motivated throughout my three years so far and kept me on these the idea of what I wanted to do after I graduate and after I graduate, I want to go to Johnson & Wales University. Chef is probably the best type of teacher you could have asked for. So I was in uh, Garmate, the Gourmet team last year with uh, two other people, Natasha and Kelly, and we got second place like against like all the other schools. We got second place. We made uh, salmon, asparagus, and sweet mashed potatoes. That is our main dish, and our side dish was a salad with shrimp on top. We got to practice, make our dish, taste it, see like what we needed to change. But before that, we had to do research on like the requirements on like what was needed. And then Chef was there to help us along the way. All right, so I need so I, I assume Adeline. These are going to become our glazes. I want you to take over the chocolate sauce, right, add the rest of that more water, and, and then the rest of that powdered sugar, okay? Thank you, love. All right. Class! Yes, Class! Yes, Chef! This way, please.
Okay, so I kind of want you, I need you to kind of gather around this way, please. Gather around that way, gather around that way. Get them up here, you can come up just a little bit. There you go, I want to make sure everybody can see. Good, 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 good. Excellent, can you guys see? Yes. I can take somebody over here, I'll take you a little bit closer. Come on. Vicker, there you go, good, right there. Right there. Just jump. Okay, cool. We're gonna keep an eye on our temperature. All right, at all times, the easiest way to ruin fried food is to fry it too hot. Uh, the other easiest way is to fry it too cold. If you fry it too cold, what happens? Greasy. Who said greasy? Me. Thank you. Me. We we both said greasy. You both said greasy? <laughs> yes. At the same exact time? Yes. yes. I think that you're lying. At the same time. Um, you always think we're lying. Only on Tuesdays. Um, it's, it's Thursday. Thursday. Whatever. Uh, oh we don't want it to fry too cold. Uh, at too, too cold a temperature, it'll get very, very greasy. We need the moisture that's in here to get hot enough to push out the fat. That's what's happening. As it steams, the steam is pushing out the fat. That's why it doesn't get greasy. If you fry it too cold, then it's not going to steam enough, and it's going to it's going to soak up grease like a sponge. If it fries too hot, it'll burn before it's finished cooking. Do I have tongs over here? Tongs, please. All right, so when you're putting this baby in, uh, make sure that your hands are washed, obviously. I know you've already washed your hands several times because look how clean and sanitized you are. But do it again. Do it again. Very, very dry. You don't want your hands to have a little drop of water because that'll it'll pop up in, into your face. When you're putting them down, you're going to put them down with your fingers. All right? So here's how you're going to do it. Please watch. Can you see? Can you see? All right. We're, gonna, we're not going to drop it, obviously. We're going to layer it in slow, away from ourselves, like that. While you're watching it, can you see? Sure. Thank you. The first thing it's going to do is it's going to sink all the way to the bottom. You're going to take your pair of tongs and you're just going to give it a gentle little nudge. And then as soon, as soon as you do, it's going to pop up to the top. What we're going to do is we're going to cook it for about 20, 30 seconds on this side. Then we're going to flip it over. The second side is going to be shorter. Because it's going to do most of its cooking right now. See how it's popping up? This is not going to go as fast as you think. It's not like it's instant. Cool? When you're doing your, your little baby guys, again, just give them a little kick at the bottom so that they don't stick to the bottom of the pan. I got a bubble above it? Yeah. Come on. You're going to want to turn these guys around a couple of times. Flip them around a couple of times. Um, the way that I've always done this with chopsticks. Didn't you do this with chopsticks? Absolutely not. Absolutely not? Okay. I've only done it with chopsticks. So this is... Chopsticks? Yeah. It would be oh, easier with yeah. chopsticks. Right? It was so much yeah. easier with chopsticks. Did you, <laughs> you put the chopsticks into the hole? Yeah. Uh, do we have any chopsticks we left in the cafe? No, they're in. They're in the drawer. Go oh, give me a chopstick. <laughs> when you are done, you're going to use the Chinese spider to get it out, to fish her out. Okay. This one's not done quite yet. He needs to flip on the other side first. When it's done. I'm so, I'm, I'm so sorry. I wish, thank you. I'm so sorry. I wish I had a, a better um, answer for you. I'm, really, I'm, I'm mostly looking for color at this point. Anybody know how to hold chopsticks? Just because if you know how to hold them, it makes your life a whole lot easier while you're doing this. But if you just hold it out this way, it's so much easier to get in and out. Let it drip a little bit, then immediately over to your drying rack. Just like that. Cool? Chef Matt, you want to knock one of these out for me? Yeah, sure. Thank you very much. And by the way, if I haven't already done this, I apologize. Uh, we were so proud and so happy to welcome to the Wakaiva Culinary Arts Magnet Program our newest chef instructor, Chef Matt McCransky. <laughs> chef Matt! <laughs> He is a, a main, an amazing addition to our team, and we're so proud to have him now fried donut. <laughs> fried donut, yeah. All right, which one should I grab? Which one should I grab? Powder, 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 powder. Powder, powder, powder. Let's try the powder. Not at the point. Open your eyes before you point it. That's not How are we doing over there with that glaze? He's done. You can pull them off the heat. Perfect. He beautiful. Beautiful, 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 beautiful. Did you use chopsticks? Did you use the chopsticks? Did you use the chopsticks? I just kind of give him a little bit of kick here. Give him a little nudge. Plus, like, if you use it. I'm scared to use the metal 
taste it. Oh, no, I'm not coordinated. Why are you using a ladle? <laughs> yeah, I'm not coordinated now. There's tasting spoons right over there. But no, you definitely should use the ladle. See, I'm Let me take a picture. Okay, I'm left handed. See? Show me that. Now you can pierce me in front of my live audience. Well, see, here's the thing. This is going to be an unbelievably thin coating. Oh, no. Any, 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 any tasting spoon is fine. Yeah. Any tasting spoon is fine. So you hold it like that. Welcome to the corner. Especially about fun guy, which really aren't that fun of a guy. Oh, I know. We're so, we're, I'm so funny. I know. I appreciate it. There's no speech prepared. Uh, oh. Just dad jokes. But I'm not going to say that. Oh, so no, 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 no. no, you draw out a dad joke. Small dad joke out after teaching him about surf safe today. What's he have why did the chicken just start manically screaming? Don't question words. I'm just not going to do that. I was screaming at the oil already. I feel like everybody does that. It's okay. Yeah, it's Alright, who's next? I think Desai, you're next. This is your fire now. Oh, Nathan, it's your turn. This is your turn. Come on! Come on, Nathan. Show off that beautiful mask. Thank you. So it looks like we have four, am I counting them correctly, frying stations across the kitchen? Three stations. Three stations. Three frying stations, and then we have our two glazing pots going, and we'll have, of course, I assume that that'll be the finishing touch that we'll be getting to. Of course, sprinkles. Of course, sprinkles. You've got to have sprinkles. Sprinkles are for winners. of beautiful golden brown donuts and a couple of donut holes and looking forward to having a full batch shortly. Now, Chef, I noticed that, of course, when we were doing the demonstration a minute ago, the first thing that you talked about was how to handle the hot oil safely. Yeah. And I, I think about this, like, I know we don't have wood shop classes very often anymore, but I think about this and if I were a parent mm -hmm. getting ready to send my student, it's like most teachers would say, you're out of your mind if you told them, you know what, let's give teenagers sharp knives and hot oil and let them play with fire. Yes. Um, and, and that is precisely what you do. Exactly. Exactly, yeah. Are yeah, you just hanging out? I thought you had a question. <laughs> um, so here's the thing. The reality is um, everything that we do in life is dangerous. Um, okay, so sure. our philosophy is from the very beginning, from the very first day, we start talking about safety. We talk about everything they need to do. Before any of the camera crews came here today, before um, anything happened, really, uh, I was talking with all of the students in this room about how to handle oil safely, even though most of them know. They've already had it. It's a reminder. Again, constant reminders. We are so, in the last uh, five years, we've only had one accident, and it was me. It's pressure here. We've had some slips and falls because Don't students are smart. But we haven't had cuts that have required trips to the hospital or the walk-in clinic. We haven't had burns that required much more than some burn gel. Um, we've been very fortunate um, because the reality is we have to teach them how to do all of these things carefully because if we don't build caution in the very beginning, just the process of constantly being around all of this stuff makes them feel like they are safer than they truly are. Right, well, and, and I, I know you talked about the pressure and the stress and mm -hmm. the multitasking that comes, and 
I would imagine that by the time you get to that point, it has to be second nature. Absolutely. You're not thinking about Absolutely. safe decisions constantly. You just make them automatically. Right, it's, right, right. It's part of, that, part of that part of your brain that, ju that handles your breathing. Right. Um, and and I, I mean, you see this among professional chefs, you know, shouting that they're coming behind each other. Right. Um, and, you know, it was turned all the way like, Particularly when you're working. I mean, if you, were, if you were to look up and down the line, you won't see anybody standing next to you. Yes. Yes. Uh, sure. to, uh, they all. They, they just know that we don't do that. You don't get next to somebody who's crying because, although I hope that I can guess what you're going to do next, I might be wrong. Yeah. And that's where you just have to be careful. Uh, have you fried fried right donuts here. yet? When are you going to do that? Thank you. All right. All right. All right. Fry something, Tyler. So while we wait for our donuts to come out, let sure. me ask this question. Let's assume that we have someone watching who has either a current or a future Mustang who is interested in this. Yes. What's the next step? Okay, next step is they want to contact uh, me and our guidance counselors here on campus. Uh, you can, the easiest way, in fact, yes, me first, then the guidance counselors. And then we'll have a quick conversation to make sure, because in order to come in as a freshman, you need to apply to the magnet program. You do that through OCPS. You don't do that through us directly. You do that through OCPS. The reason you might want to have a conversation with me first is just to make sure that this is the right program for you. We have a huge number of students right now who have already expressed a lot of interest in joining our program next year. And I want to make sure that everyone who's joining, especially if it requires their parents to drive them, uh, really is excited about the program and knows what they're getting themselves into. Uh, but generally speaking, if you know that based on everything that you see, this is exactly where I want to be. Uh, you would go, there's a link on wakaibaculinary.org uh, for parents. They can click that and it'll take them directly to um, the application at uh, OCPS's magnet page. Yeah, and something else we want to point out, um, we know that not everyone is going to be able to join us in real time tonight uh, because of conflicts and other sorts of things like that. But don't worry, um, this video will be, remain on Facebook available for on-demand replay, so you can come back and return to it later. Um, and we'll, I think you also have an event next week. Yeah, we have, we're doing so that. For those exactly. who aren't on Facebook, if you want to get on YouTube, and of course there's always the written information available on the website as well. Right. And so many videos, and you can see our kids doing all kinds of different things. So you can get a really good idea of what this program is about just by going on the website and watching a couple of videos. Now, what what variety of courses do you have? Because obviously it's it's a seven period day, and right. I know you don't teach all of them, but no. Um, but but what what's what is the variety of, of? Okay, so all of our kids start off with culinary arts one, which is their opportunity to get that safety stuff that we were talking about. Their opportunity to learn about serving safe food. That's where they start training for their first uh, safety certification. And then they do all the basic things that you would do at any culinary arts program, regardless, anywhere in the world. Even culinary arts programs for adults. Knife skills, knife safety, basic stocks and sauces, how to work with quick bread, how to work with you know very, very basic yeast breads. Um, how to follow this national and commercial here. recipes. I don't know the difference between I am, commercial I recipe and uh, home recipes. Like, There's all the little nuts and bolts shot. types of things oh, no, that you have to learn. Uh, as well as the the introduction to culinary math, a little bit of culinary history so you understand. Because it's the difference from uh, the, looking the in a mirror and looking at the camera. camera that every that chef has to for. Um, two, they start working on things that are a lot like It's a big jump. It's a big jump. Culinary one to culinary two is a big jump. Culinary two, you have to be part of a magnet. What's there? What's there? Is there? Yeah. The magnet, or you can be visible with Kaiba. But Kaiba, you got to be in uh, the uh, magnet. Right now, three seventy-five. Uh, uh, apply for and be approved for yeah. the magnet. And that would be the case regardless of whether you would be regardless. naturally zoned for Kaiba or not. Right. Regardless. Regardless. Um, and, there, and there's multiple reasons for that. The, the biggest one is culinary two. We start working with a lot of fairly challenging recipes. Uh, the demands we make on our students are quite high. And um, it's not just a, another elective. It's just not another elective. Huh? Right. This, this is really. <laughs> this is where you're deciding where you want to be. You're deciding you want to be here. Right. This, this is to, to put it into a collegiate equivalent. This is where you declared your major. Exactly. You, you declared your major. That, that Culinary one. Four hundred level course. You figured out what you want to do. Culinary yeah. two. You know. Yeah. And that's where they get to do all the really cool stuff where they get to branch out into breakfast cookery. We start talking about regional cuisine. We talk about all of the different ways that you can work with starches, like fruits and vegetables. We make a lot of um, fun stuff. 
for them. Well, it's a lot more fun stuff. Uh, Culinary 3 is where we will start working towards professionalism. And those are the guys who do all of our catering. They do all of our bigger events, Culinary 3, junior level students. And they are our most active uh, in the public facing, public facing students. Culinary 4, they don't do as much public stuff because they're doing a lot more food science stuff. They're making pepperoni and aging it. They're making uh, Swiss cheese and aging it. They're making their very own bacon, uh, curing it, smoking it, and aging it. Um, they're the ones who make our hot sauce every year. Our hot sauce, which is uh, the Mustang Heat hot sauce, it sells out every year. Oh. It is um, actually both mayor of Orlando, the mayor of Apopka, and um, somebody else. I can't remember who it is. One of our uh, Republican, uh, not Republican, but our. It's weird state how I didn't have to touch the one that I dropped. Uh, buys up cases of it. Every year. <laughs> So uh, it's that they're working on that. Um, so it's it's when they get to the senior level, that's where they branch out. So they go to restaurant right, management, to event management. They focus in on that, or they focus in on the gastronomy that happens in here, or they focus in on bakery and pastry. You know, you know gotcha. Now, so you mentioned a four-year track. Yes, sir. That you can have where you're participating in culinary your entire Mustang career. Correct. So that's particularly relevant for anybody who may be watching who has a current middle school student yes. who is looking at options for next year. What if we have a current high school student who may be already completing their freshman or sophomore year and say, hey, is it too late to join the party? That is a challenge. If I, I, I would love to talk to that student. Um, I would have to pull strings, and I will pull those strings for you. But that is not how the program is built. But we can make stuff happen. We can make stuff happen. <laughs> I mean, if you're desperate to come here from another culinary arts program, I'll steal you in a heartbeat. <laughs> well, we, you know, it's funny because you know that most of the time that I spend at the Pine is in athletics. Right. In athletics, we don't talk about the R word because if you get involved in recruiting conversations, you get in big trouble so much trouble. real fast. Please. Which is why it's so great to be a magnet. Which is why it's so great to be a magnet. Because magnet, you can recruit all day I can all recruit day long. all day. And, and we do. Uh, one of the saddest conversations that I had recently was with a parent and a really excited 13-year-old who unfortunately is in Orange County. And there's just no way that they can they can make that move. And so they can't join us because they're zoned for Seminole. And for everybody who is outside of Orange County who can't join us, uh, move. Move. Just move. <laughs> Seems easy. I know, right? <laughs> exactly. Uh, so it is time for me to check around with my kiddos. Yeah, I'm seeing uh, lots more gold. I'm seeing donuts. a lot of uh, Alyssa. Come over here and make some donuts, okay, honey? Take them out of the way. Make a donut. Uh, I would like you to go over there next to Alyssa. Uh, don't be in her way while she's making a donut. But make a donut right there. They don't want to be next to the camera so close. How we looking, Freddie? Yeah, it dropped a lot. Did you put them all in at once? Okay. Um, I'm all right, let me grab gloves. Uh, uh, do we have both of our glazes ready? Can you bring those two glazes over to where Tyler is? Put them on that little sec section right there along with the sprinkles. Because you want to have the part, you want to have the parchment side up. Okay. I have no idea what time it is. What time is it? All right, cool. Good time. We'll do the. Yeah. I went to this one's gonna be gorgeous and I call dibs on it. Yeah, yeah, for those oh, those are very small, man. Those are way too small. If you have any other questions, questions that haven't already been asked, it's not too late. Uh, so those into the chat and get those out for you. Yo, class! Yes, chef! Gather around right here, please. If you have donuts in, you can wait till you pull them out, but then as soon as they're out, come over here, please. All right, so what I want you guys to do is kind of back up just a little bit because I'd like the camera to be able to see us actually do this. Can everybody see? Okay, this is a ready-to-eat food, an RTE food. That means that you have to wear gloves at all times because this isn't going to be cooked anymore. Even if your hands are washed, you're still going to wear gloves while you do this part. If you're going to be doing a chocolate, what you're going to do? You're going to dip them by holding them at the edge like this. Drop them flat down. Give them a little turn. Straight up. Let it drip out for a little second. And flip it over like that. 
Just like that. Cool? If you're going to be doing the white, it's a little different because it goes with the, um, the sugar glaze. It's completely coated. Krispy Kreme completely coats their donut. So it's going to go in, turn it, flip it over, roll or let all the excess drip off, all right? Don't let all the excess drip off here because it's going to get hard. Look how pretty that is. Now, I know that one of you is going to go, but Chef, I have to have a sprinkle. I can't eat my donuts without a sprinkle. I know it sounds exactly like you. You do realize I listen to you guys talk like all day long. <laughs> okay, so this is what we're shooting for, all right, guys? Yes, chef. All right, thank you very much. When you're gonna when you're gonna decorate, you're gonna decorate all right here. Yep. Fry them over there. Decorate over here. Thank you, guys. Oh my God, this one's so pretty. What size did you get? Get the medium. I know. That is not medium. Look at look at You lied. Well, if, if the medium is too small, get a lunch. It looks pretty. Do you think I love it. Bubble stop going? No. Um, if the really? Bubble, if, the bubbles, if the bubble stops going, you want to turn the heat up, because that means uh, temp got too much. Hey, you got some freshies over here. Grab one of them. Grab a freshie. If you have any more questions, please don't be shy. I'd be glad to keep an eye on the live chat for another several minutes here while we wait for... The show up making magic to complete here. Yeah, keep an eye on the chocolate, please. I assume that these donuts are not just for show, but they're going to get eaten tonight, too. Pretty. That's a good shot to end on. I think. Yeah, we, we were like doing chocolate water. I'd say, I'd say do, one, do one more glaze. We've got five chocolate water. Do one more glaze, and then we'll like wait to the chocolate water. Ladies and gentlemen, we want to thank you for joining us tonight again. Revivalculinary.org is the website. Christopher.baseofocps.net is the email address. If you or your students would like to get involved and learn more about culinary arts, we want to thank you for joining us tonight. We wish we could share some donuts with you. Unfortunately, it just doesn't work through the screen. But thanks for joining us tonight, and we'll see you soon. Good night from Wakaiva Culinary Arts.